Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Q4 FY22 earnings conference call of Bandhan Bank Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then 0 on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Hiren Shashikam Shah. Thank you and over to you sir. Thank you Margaret. Good evening everyone and thanks for joining this call. It's our pleasure to welcome you all to discuss Bandhan Bank's business and financial performance for the quarter ending March 2022. We will take this opportunity to update you on the recent developments in the industry and Bandhan Bank during this quarter. To discuss all this in detail, I've got with me our founder, managing director and CEO, Mr. Chandra Shekhar Ghosh. our chief financial officer mr sunil samdani head asset mr kamal batra housing finance head mr suresh ayer and myself hirinsha head of investor relations now i would like to request our founder md and ceo mr chandrashekhar ghosh to brief you all about bank's operational and financial performance along with development for the quarter ending march 22 over to you sir good evening to all of my friends thank you for your time <clears throat> to join this the call i already said in earlier the fear of pandemic is over the third wave has been much milder that it has not infused to my any of the confidence or result of quarter 4 financial year 2022 also clearly reflects all of this trend quarter 4 of any is the most active period for the banking industry and financial year 21 22 was no different from that i have been meeting my customers at the ground level and the signs of revival are for all to see credit demand is back many of our customers who had postponed their loans have taken fresh credit from us in the quarter let me start with a broad overview of the year we reached the milestone of around 1 lakh crore advances in the quarter gone by advances stood at 99338 crores which is year on year basis up the growth 14% deposit growth has come 24% which is the amount was 96331 crore kasa retain is the 42% and retail deposit 77% net interest income has been grown 42.6% from the preceding quarter 3500 operating profit grown 53.5% from the preceding quarter which is the highest growth in the bank life the bank reported net profit for this quarter is a 1902 crores neem has increased 190 basis point higher from the preceding quarter the last financial year the bank provided its resilience yet again we are now well on the revival path and the operating environment as well as ongoing reality is in favor of a strong resurgent of business in future now let me drive deeper into the few key aspects of this the success of this the parameters the first point is a collection efficiency to take a collection efficiency 
has come and the quarter which is called the march 22 has come 99% collection efficiency in the month of march in eb has come 99% which is increased from the 97% of the last quarter excluding npa and the adr this means the collection efficiency has come is a normal collection efficiency in west bengal also in 99% and assam 1% lower which is 98% and total india is the 99% say that the another part 89% of my npa customer are paying in the march 2022 59% of my restructured customer are paying in march 22 the improvement in collection efficiency is a thanks to our customer going back to their livelihood in full swing and the commitment that the customers have towards the bank the improvement in collection efficiency has resulted in lowering our npa the bank gross npa stands now 6.46% which is shows that the 4.35% lower than the last quarter net npa has been reached 1.66% dpd across the oracle of microcredit because of the large portfolio which has come nearly half of the half half from the last quarter eb the emerging entrepreneur business has a three vertical one is a group based lending which is we call the microcredit another vertical called that is the small business and agri loan which are we called individual which is graduated from micro credit to individual and another vertical we say that the micro home loan which are also individual loan and some another one hub which is the two wheeler loan the eb saw a robust growth in this quarter as expected because this the portfolio has come growth in the last quarter of every year in financial year 22 they are added 22.88 lakhs new customers in financial year 22 disbursement in the quarter of 4 where it is that they are raised on that is the 22968 crores which is a 50% 15% higher than the pre pandemic uh, years last quarter which is a 2020 so that means this is shows that the business has come to this normalcy the bank as a policy and the strategic uh, policy the migrated or graduated the group loan to the individual the as on march 2022 bank migrated 24.32% of the group loan to the individual loan <coughs> sorry come to this the next the growth vertical uh, which is the housing loan we are two and half years ago we have been merged this vertical from the group in last quarter it has come very good growth but this year they are given this very tremendous growth portfolio grown 11% year on year portfolio stands now 23726 crore cagr in the last two years has been healthy 9.29% despite the challenges period we are passing in 19 in financial year 2022 the total disbursement have done this vertical 
4,340 crores, growth of 105% over the previous year and 95% from the last quarter. In quarter four, 86% are housing and 13% are left. And this is the housing loan portfolio, 61% salary based, 39% is self-employed. Portfolio quality continue in the same good. Next point is here that this loan have been ticket size also increased from the previous year. Nearly 1 lakh 10,000 rupees average ticket size. Coming to our next two vertical, another vertical is in <coughs> commercial banking. So commercial banking have been grown 60.8% year on year and quarter on quarter have been grown 40% which is the portfolio 11,720 crores. The retail credit other than housing loan, our gold loan, personal loan, two-wheeler and, and auto loan, together this is in, uh, stands this portfolio 1,645 crores, which is the growth has come yearly 39%. These are the total performances come from the business point of view. I am coming now the strategy of the bank. We are uh, decided uh, that the 2020 will be prepared a, we have been prepared a five years plan, which was the 21 to 25. And during this period, two years we have been seen that there is a pandemic situation has come business growth is not coming as a normal. For that reason, the last February, we are again revised our plan. And we find out on that, we can reach that plan with another one year needed. Instead of 2025, it will be reached 2026. Major other couple of points strategically we have been decided which on, on the track we like to mention. The bank have the strategic first point how we can be like to strategically diversify the microfinance loan with the other portfolio. So group loan, which one is the last year is a 60% has come down 47% in this year. Housing loan has increased from 23 to 24 and commercial banking has increased from 16% to 28%, including individual loan, which is graduated from group loan. And retail loan, 1.3% of the total portfolio to 1.6% the portfolio. So we like to continue in this way to graduate and also expand with the other business. And accordingly, by 2025, we can be reached to microcredit portfolio, which is called the group loan, 26% from today, 47%. We are diversifying geographically. Bank has said on that, that the geographically uh, uh, expand the branches across the country other than East. This year, we are also decided 530 branches will open, which is the 80% above will be other than East. That also helped us to diversify the, the book. You know that a housing loan vertical, we are already working on that, the uh, West and South. They are also expanding more of those branches in a South and North which also helped us to geographically diversification of the portfolio. Third point, banks are focusing on the retail business mode, not as a corporate business. So retail business more or less other than housing because of microcredit is the unsecured loan is more. So bank has decided on that how we can be like to strategically balanced the secured and unsecured loan. So 
So as of today, is in unsecured is secured loan is in 39 percent. The bank has been decided by 25. It can be 46 percent of the secured loan, and 54 percent is in unsecured loan. And 26 we can be like to reach on that 50-50 secured and unsecured loan. Bank have been open in this year. 329 new branches means in the last year next point on that bank are, are as per earlier i mentioned also we are investing for the transformation of it system including cbs and also we are developing in the digital banking focusing on that how we can be provide the digital in the rural and semi urban people with all respect of liabilities and assets so that we are we are primarily uh, we are working on that all of our loan including micro credit will process sanction this by system digitally and whoever the customer is possible they are like to repay the installment by digital they will be like to give also digital and finally graduation uh, from the micro credit group to the individual that is also separately we are like to develop time to time so this is an overall all this the performance has come because is our bank team are working very good and they are very much committed customer intention to return back the money is very good all together i hope that the coming to normal and next couple of years business will be also come to normal thank you to all of you i pass on this the next clarification to our cfo sunil sangani then we will be like to go to question answer thank you sunil thank you sir uh, good evening everyone i just want to take 5 uh, minutes of yours to run through a couple of slides uh, which i think uh, is important uh, first starting with the dpt status of our eeb which has which we been tracking and monitoring ever since the pandemic hit us we are glad to say that we have come close very close to the pre pandemic levels Uh, in terms of delinquent goes our 1 to 30 day dpd which used to be 5.3 which was 5.3% in december 21 has come down to 3% in march of 2022 31 to 60 day dpd from 2% to 1.6% 61 to 90 day dpd from 2.9 to 1.9% and npa from 13.7% to 7.8% in the EP vertical <clears throat> what is important here is when we saw the turnaround in the third quarter we saw the early delinquency bucket showed the bigger improvement and in the fourth quarter we are seeing that it improvement across all buckets whether it's 30 0 to 30 days 31 to 60 61 to 90 or npa bucket so that hardening and that gives us the confidence the future is good for us the other slide that i want to run through is the slide number 8 of our presentation which talks about the stress pool and the coverage that we have against the stress pool in december 21 we had a 17 170 billion of stress pool and we had estimated that we could recover in the quarters about 50 billion in addition to the provisions and the cgfm you recovery we are glad to inform you that we have reached this 50 billion recovery instead of two quarters in one quarter itself so that again is a good sign and it gives confidence that our customer businesses are back to normal and the coverage that we estimate as on march 22 you know that stress pool which was 170 billion has come down to 119 billion and against that 
we used to have a 54% coverage by way of provision it has gone up to 58 and a half percent as of march 2022 the estimated recovery though we have done phenomenally in the q4 conservatively we are budgeting for 30 billion for the next two quarters the fiji fmu recovery remains constant and as always we don't want to put a guess on what will be the quantum of assam relief fund but what is important here is despite not considering a sand we feel that we have enough coverage to cover our entire stress pool so these are the two important points that i wanted to mention here uh, happy to take questions thank you very much thank you very much we will now begin the question and answer session anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on the touchstone telephone If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Anyone who would like to ask a question, please press star and one at this time. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Kunal Shah from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, congratulations for uh, uh, good set of numbers. Uh, so first is uh, uh, you had highlighted that with respect to this credit guarantee will start uh, applying from uh, uh, 1st of uh, April. So if you can just uh, uh, let us know in terms of what is the status and uh, this entire CG FMU recovery of 2500 cro- uh, crores so, uh, when do we expect it to come here to come in this financial year because we we interacted and engaged with the uh, uh, cgfm so the process that they have is the institutions can claim only once a year so with that being the case this should come in two installments one first uh, the 50% of this uh, close to 50% around 1200 or crores in this financial year and the balance in the next financial year <coughs> so but we have not started so in terms of like we will do it towards the end of the fiscal or when should we expect this uh, 1200 crore crores to come in in this particular year sorry i missed the earlier part yeah so this should, as i said you know we can do it once a year so we should do it in the, by the end of this quarter and we should expect in the first half this entire money to come in the 50% piece of it okay okay uh, sure and uh, uh, when we look at it overall uh, the growth uh, was primarily coming in from the bulk deposits uh, retail was more or less uh, flat and uh, uh, was flat and was not uh, that much of a growth relative to the uh, loan book growth so how should we look at the overall deposit mobilization given uh, the rising interest rate uh, scenario and what would be our stance in terms of uh, increasing the uh, rates uh, over a period yeah. so clearly we are not worried about the deposits uh, the growth that you see in the bulk deposits is largely to do with the seasonality you will always see q4 the bulk ratio at the highest level because our advances grow at a much faster pace uh, than a pace at which a retail deposit can grow and that is one of the reasons <coughs> the other reason is we uh, if you see our rates today we are as competitive as any other bank uh, on the deposit rate side uh, the uh, you know uh, and typically uh, you know the first quarter uh, is uh, relatively muted vis-a-vis the q4 uh, of the previous year so we are confident on our deposits uh, you know interest rates clearly should not uh, you know it, it's a market driven factor uh we have uh, you know if deposit cost goes up the the lending rates also goes up in fact on the fixed rate loan which is largely microfinance for us we have already taken an increase uh, of almost uh, 150 basis point last september so the benefit of the full benefit of that should accrue in this financial year uh, and the rest portfolio is anyway linked to the variable rate loan so we don't see a challenge there uh one on the deposit mobilization side and two our pricing of uh, pricing our deposits competitively in line with the market 
Sure. And now with uh, many of the MFIs, they are raising the rates uh, given that uh, margin cap is not there. Uh, so does that also provide us with uh, more flexibility? Any which ways we were much lower than that. Uh, but uh, still, would that provide the flexibility and would we also have a chance to increase it or it will be based on our pricing and our deposits? How, how would we take that chance? Yeah. So clearly it will depend on our deposits, our funds and our credit costs. So with credit cost stabilizing, uh, right, uh, the factor here is only the cost of deposits today. So depending upon how that moves, we will take that decision. Sure, sure. Thanks. Uh, thanks a lot and all the best. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. The next question is from the line of Saurabh Kumar from J.P. Morgan. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, Sanjay. Uh, so uh, on your point of 5,000 crores of recovery, for the quarter, if we see the stress book is down by about 5,100 crores uh, from 170 to 119. Uh, and there's a write-off of 20, so shouldn't the recovery be 30 billion rupees for the quarter? Comparing like to like, right, when we uh, are comparing 170 as of December, <coughs> there as well we had a 12 billion write-off. And post that it was 170. We are comparing like to like. And in any which way, uh, you know, if there is a write-off, it has a corresponding effect on my provisioning. The provisioning balance also comes down. My PCR, so the, if, you know, if you look at holistically whether the provisioning coverage, the PCR ratio, the credit cost and the coverage, you know, on the whole, uh, it is a positive uh, move. No, no, it is a positive. I'm just trying to understand the collection from this EB stress pool would have been 30 instead of 50. Yes. Uh, yes. Okay. Yes. Understood. Understood. Okay, uh, the second is, uh, sir, I mean, on this provisioning, uh, you could have chosen to make some more standard asset provision, uh, you know, during the quarter. Uh, so, what is your view on the buffer provision which you want to keep? So, if you see, uh, during the quarter, we have taken additional set provisioning. Because if you look at our NPAs, they have come down substantially. So, if we have not taken the additional standard asset provisioning, there would have been a negative credit cost in the quarter. So, we have buffered our balance sheet. Our ratios across have improved, whether we call it PCR or we call it coverage against the stress pool, whichever way we look at it. So, uh, that is absolutely what we look at and we have uh, taken the adequate provision. Okay. And lastly, you know, from a next year perspective, I mean, your historical normalized number used to be 1.7, 1.8. Uh, so how should we think about, would you now buffer up that number uh, going ahead or how should we think about the normalized provisions so on? So we had given that guidance even in the earlier quarters that on a steady state basis, we look at uh, 200 to 225 basis points, so about 2 to 2.25 percent. I, you know, typically what we say is 2% uh, plus or minus 25 basis point as the regular credit cost going forward. And uh, having said that, we would continue to add buffers uh, depending upon the, uh, so that, uh, that, that can add to that. Uh, so on the whole, with buffer, uh, you know, it could be slightly higher. Got it. And just one last question, sir. What is the PSLC income for the full year? For the full year, PSLC was uh, 658 crores. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rahul Jain from Goldman Sachs. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, hi, Sunil. Hi, sir. Um, uh, just, just a couple of hi. questions. Um, uh, first on, uh, hi. Uh, first on uh, these slippages uh, during the quarter. So, um, the math suggests that it was about 1900 odd crores. Is that, is that a correct number? <laughs> no. If you look at bank as a whole, the gross slippage is number 1365 crores, of which the EEB gross slippage is 1181 crores. The gross recovery and upgrades is 2395 crores, uh, and in the EEB, the recovery and upgrades is 2204 crores. And uh, just on the slippages bit, um, generally through the year, um, the individual book, which which where you sort of you know dive, you know sort of increasingly focus, uh, how the asset quality trends are playing out there. Can you give us some sense? So individual book clearly is much better than the group loans. So there the asset quality is much lower than the guided uh, 
credit cost that we are doing it is much in fact half of it uh, you know there we don't see uh, an npa beyond 1 1.5% one one you mean np or the loan losses bnps okay uh, rahul quality of the individual loan because of the very graduate customer from the group and they are very very good better than the group understood sir and sir uh, you know if you look at the total uh, ev portfolio uh, what percentage over time can potentially move to individual and uh, you know when you look at the uh, you know basis the new rbi norms on mfi um, what percent of the book will will uh, be comfortable uh, with 1 lakh rupees of ticket size assuming 50% of the loan to income ratio uh you know that the process wise we are started 2 years before uh graduate from the group to individual because their family income has been increased and we assess the family income 2 years before we we <clears throat> check the three uh, status uh, 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 from the credit bureau not only microfinance non microfinance which is now rbi has come for micro was introduced it so practice point of view we are are on the on the very speed way we are making on that and we need it is needed on that because if i go to this the lending to these people i should be also see that the not only women and the also the husband check will be needed so that is a good way to grow the last mile connectivity by the industry and bandhan is also the part of uh, that to grow it second point on that the because of income level now rbi have been suggested but two years before we are we are talk to all, all of you on that how long i can be say that this customer will be the micro credit customer is it 20 years 10 years if they have not income increase so i cannot uh, then i have been not contribute anything their life so if their income increase why not they will be graduate to the msme they will graduate to the agri business they will come back on that for that region we are started it now if you see that 24% of our group loan are converted in a individual loan which is last two years but majorly last two quarters so i hope that the it will be like to make it gradually in this way 50% we can be like to make another two years for it for that helpful sir uh sunil one or two last questions uh, the uh, you the previous question uh, from from sorob on um on the sanad asset provision you said you have taken it uh, you know in this quarter can you quantify uh, you know what that number is and uh, you know next year fiscal 23 um you know do you plan to build uh, anything over and above this 200 basis point of guided credit cost that you have given uh I will, I will I will give you the exact number just during the call uh, sure and then just uh, just one uh, one last bit um, you know in terms of diversification uh, it's about 225 crores it sorry i just got that number it's about 225 crores okay that's the standard asset provision that you have taken in the additional time. over and above required okay and just last bit on diversification point um, um, you know which which uh, sir talked about of the mfi book individual plus non individual can we get the latest figures of east and the by the, the bifurcation between east west south etc so this you want to know for eeb or the bank as a whole eeb So West Bengal, you know, if I have to give you the top three states, right? Uh, my total EB book is sixty-two thousand four hundred crores. Uh, West Bengal is twenty-five three one five. Assam is five eight one two. 
Bihar is third at 6957 and UP is fourth at 5320. All right. Thank you so much and uh, wish you all a good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you may press star and one to ask a question at this time. The next question is from the line of Kartik Chilapa from Vino Vista Fund Management. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thank you very much for the opportunity, sir, and congrats on the great quarter. Uh, uh, Sunil, I just want to confirm some numbers that you gave. So you said 13.6 or 1,365 crore is the gross slippages and upgrades is 2,395 crore, right? Yes, and this does not include write-off. These are upgrades and recoveries. So the net reduction is possibly about uh, 1,000 or crore, and the right, technical write-off separately is about another 2,000 crore, right? Yes, and that's how my, uh, yes, that's fine. Okay, and uh, on the EEV book of 66,000 crore, uh, how much is uh, West Bengal? So we just uh, discussed that number. So the total EEV book post write-off is 62,400, of which West Bengal is 25,315. 25,315. Okay, great. Uh, just uh, two questions from my side. The first one is uh, for FY23, what is the kind of loan growth that you are expecting for the for the bank? And uh, specifically, if you could talk about uh, the group loan and the housing loan, what is the kind of loan growth you are expecting for the bank as well as these two segments? So we are looking at 20 to 25% at the bank level and housing is also expected to grow uh, in fact, our internal target is to grow faster and uh, than the uh, bank overall bank average. And the group micro. So that put together will be will be growing in line with the uh, pan bank average. Okay, got it. Uh, and my last question is, uh, can I get the restructured book for uh, the housing segment and what was the yield for the housing segment this quarter excluding the IVPC uh, book? <coughs> On the yield side, Just a minute. Sure. So it's about uh, almost ten percent, nine point nine nine, ten percent yield on housing. Okay, and this excludes the IBPC, this one, right? Because that is much lower yield. Yes. Okay, and the restructure book for housing? So, the, excluding the book which has come out of restructuring, it now stands at 528 crores. So, there is about 475 crores where the restructuring, in fact, if we talk today, everything is out of moratorium, but as of 31st March, uh, uh, you know, 528 was uh, still in moratorium, while 475 came out six months back. So, as of today, everything is out from moratorium or restructured. Uh, by that we mean it's still part of the restructured book, but they have to start paying. The payment moratorium has expired, but it's still like restructured, right? Yeah, because uh, that's the regulatory requirement that once you uh, do a restructured loan, till the time uh, the loan remains in your book, has to be classified as restructured standard or otherwise as if the classification changes. Excellent. Just one clarification, Sunil, to a comment that you made earlier. So on the micro book, you said you have taken about uh, 150 basis points of hike and uh, the housing book is anyway on floating rate. So your underlying observation is that even if rates were to rise on the funding side, you should be able to hold on to your limbs, all other things being equal, right? No. Microfinance is a fixed rate. 
yes so so we, we should be able to maintain uh, our names but that depends on which names are you looking at right because uh, q4 because of the uh, big recovery that we see on the npa pool uh, you know it is higher but yes if you look okay, at the pool you. year we should be better than that Okay, got it. And as far as this inflation impact on your micro borrowers is concerned, especially in the non-agri segment, is there anything that you wish to highlight, at least from their cash flow serviceability point of view? I I don't think uh, uh, inflation has. We've seen an impact of inflation so far on our customers. Historically, also, uh, we've never seen inflation as the major issue as far as microfinance customer goes. and so far we have not seen any impact okay great thank you very much and wish you and the team all the very best for uh, the rest of the quarters thank you thank, thank you. you thank you the next question is from the line of roshan shutke from icic prudential mutual fund please go ahead yeah uh, thanks for taking my question um, firstly um, uh, uh, this uh, eeb book right of 2400 crores now what is the tenor of this book how many uh, how many, what proportion of the loans are one year and what proportion of the loans are two year maturing loans 60% loan are two years 40% loan are one year okay um, and uh, would you also can you give the break up of uh, how many of them are first cycle second cycle so on and so forth we we don't have it handy because we uh, for last uh, many quarters we uh, not been discussing the cycles so, so we'll we'll check that and we'll share it with you yeah thanks so much that's all from my side thank, thank you thank you the next question is from the line of adarsh parasam puri from clsa please go ahead hey yeah mm, sunil so just wanted to check um, could you just uh, give the breakdown of the other income uh, all income excluding uh, the nii you did mention the uh, pslc income but if you could just break out the 2800 crores so very difficult to give a line by but i can give you the top three contributors which will anyway be 80 90% uh, of the total yeah. fee income uh, so um, the highest of course is the processing fee but that is linked to the disbursement so that for the full year was 848 or crores uh, and uh, the third party income the third party distribution income is the third uh, largest which is at 347 crores got it and uh, just and the pc uh, 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 the, the the next piece is the bad debt recovery this quarter has been a good quarter for us uh, so recovery from bad debt is 388 crores This for the year. This is for the year. Got it. This is useful. And the PC uh, PSLC income of six sixty crore was made on what kind of uh, sell downs or certificate? Like what's what's the underlying quantum? So we didn't sell anything under the uh, micro portfolio because of the Udyama da. So these were largely other PSLs and other. and would you now uh, do a little bit more of uh, pslc sell down you would have excess right so oh, that that clearly depends on what is my excess and uh, how we tend to use it because the option to us is ibpc or pslc depending upon where we get the better yield <laughs> got it no i was just asking this because there will be demand in one or two years from a large bank merger so just wanted to check if um, that uh, you you do have more scope in the pnl to do that um and my second question is um, uh, could you uh, could you just give the slippages and recovery upgrade numbers for the full year so for the full year uh, if you look at bank as a whole uh, or should i talk about eb you could give both scenarios that's okay huh? so for the bank as a whole the gross slippages was 9430 crores i'm talking about bank as a whole uh, recoveries and upgrades was 5561 crores 
and the write off was uh, 3247 crores and uh, eb the same the numbers of eb for the full year it is uh, 8134 crores uh, the gross slippages, the recoveries and upgrades was 4,487 and the write-off was 3,244. Perfect. This is helpful, Sunil. And uh, last thing, it was asked, but let's say that uh, fourth quarter was great. You you do have momentum on collections now. If credit costs undershoot uh, the next 12 months in terms of the 2, 2.2 number that you guide, um, would it be fair to say that a lot of it could be used to like just build up the buffer? Yes. Got it. Perfect. This is useful, uh, Sunil. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Kashyap Javeri from MK Investment Managers. Please go ahead. Just one question from my side and a data point. Uh, in the, uh, you know, recovery that you had during this quarter, what was the in interest income that was recognized on those recoveries during the quarter? That's the only question I have. Mr. Zaveri, I'm sorry, I don't have that number handy. I will have to come back. You can uh, take from us offline. Sure, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Before we take the next question, we would like to remind our participants, you may press star and 1 to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Param Subramanian from Macquarie. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, team. Thank you for the opportunity. So I wanted to ask, on the restructuring book, um, what proportion is still under moratorium? Because you mentioned uh, some amount would start coming out of moratorium from in fourth quarter and first quarter. And uh, what is the accrued interest on the restructured book? Uh, for the EB vertical. So, uh, you know, 50% of the, uh, you know, roughly, plus or minus 1 or 2% it can be, but roughly 50% of my restructured book will come out of, more, has come out of moratorium starting 1st of April, and the rest will start from 1st of July. Got it. That's helpful. And uh, and and what's the accrued interest on the restructured book? Uh, accrued interest on the restructured book should be around uh, eight hundred odd crores. Got it. Thanks, Ali. Uh, one more question, basically on the new MFI norms. I wanted to ask. Uh, you know, a, a number of the MFI entities are talking about slowing down disbursements in the first half until you know the credit bureau, etc., align to the new norms, uh, basically on calculating household income. So firstly, how are we placed on these uh, new norms if we are looking at it? Of course, applicability is a different thing for us, but uh, are we uh, looking to slow down those persons and what, what proportion of our book would be in line with this, you know, 50% uh, EMI to household income cap? Yeah, that that was my question. Thank you. There is a two factors in here. One factor, always after the March, April, disbursement has come down. This is this is normal nature. First to 15 days, there is a no disbursement has come. This is a normal nature. Second part on that, the, I mentioned earlier, we are really practicing this household income credit guru check in our graduation loan two years before, and it is practicing. So in that sense, we have not much more time to transform to the new system. This is going on to us. And we are not wait for one month. So, so essentially what we are saying is when we started this individual loan product, we were looking at family income, we were looking at family credit bureau. So there is a process which is already running for a individual loan process. Of course, that book is uh, smaller uh, the size than a group loan. Uh, so, to, so to that extent, the volume will be much bigger. Uh, it took us two two weeks uh, to start that process on the ground, and we've been since then we've been doing it. Got it. Got it. That's helpful. Thanks, Anil, and uh, congratulations on the good quarter. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Abhishek Murarka from HSBC. Please go ahead. Yeah, good evening, sir. Um, so my question is again on these new norms. Now, 
you said that you are uh, you know already practicing this uh, over the past two years but what i understand is some part of it is also dependent on external agencies like credit bureaus being able to give you the information and some of the participants have called out that the bureau itself is not ready with that kind of information about specific about the consumer and the household so how are you bypassing that and you know i mean you are able to get that information or have that information without the help of the bureau so it is you're right you know how you read it is important so there is no one report for the consolidated family out, uh, you know record both on the micro and on this side so what we do and our arrangement with the credit bureau is they give us they give us a separate report on the uh, for the husband and then for the wife but within that they give us both the micro as well as the consumer so we we'll take two reports instead of one and accordingly we proceed and that is what we've been doing it for our individual loans okay and have you what kind of uh, uh, observation do you have on the foyer is there enough headroom to give large ticket loans or do you have to increase the duration of the product to uh, accommodate it what has been the experience because you know you seem to be uh, uh, ahead of the curve in in uh, practicing this foyer we are also practicing in our individual loan 50% so all the customers they have enough headroom uh, in terms of that 50% no that cannot be like to comments the now but it's the need on that another quarter will be passed and then we can be see that so let me give you a data point we used to be 50 50 for year to year loan that ratio is now 40 to 60% 4640 right if that helps okay 40 60 sorry what is that so 40 is one year 60 is two years earlier it used to be 50 50 okay and are you also in, uh, planning to introduce longer tenor loans maybe 3 years or longer just to reduce the emi see that we will have to see you know once we have uh, it, it is just there right it's only a month uh, we will have to see whether uh, whether we are able to fulfill the customer requirements or not and then we will have to take that call whether we are comfortable or is comfortable uh, and then we will have to take that call Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Thanks for the answer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rahul Pichha from Altiac Equity. Please go ahead. Yeah. Thanks for the opportunity. My first question is on uh, Assam collection efficiency. So when I look at the collection efficiency in Assam for the month of December, it was ninety six percent, and for the month of March, it was ninety eight percent. While for Q four uh average it was 93% so why is there a dip in the average number i just wanted to understand that just a second <clears throat> so it is not a dip right if you see uh the the average has improved by 2% so yes you are right so if you if you assume that december was the base and then it has to improve then yes uh you will find it as a dip uh, but if you see uh, on on a month on month basis uh, there has been an improvement yeah for the quarter there is an improvement but i was just thinking that from december onwards our collection efficiency trends should have been on the upside so in assam was jan or feb a bit challenging or any qualitative insights on that no not really you will always see the last quarter of the month will have the higher collection efficiency so that has been the trend okay okay but the average for the quarter being 93 it kind of also implies that uh, probably jan feb would have been even under 90 right no there are two two things here right one is uh, the recoveries from npa so as the quarter progresses the recoveries improve right second is the write offs that we take that also gets impacted only the march number and not the full quarter number okay but these collection efficiencies don't in- include the recovery from uh, the npa pool right the geographic collection efficiencies that you have given or is it including so this is, no this geographic is excluding npa 
Yeah. Okay. So that would have been, I think, primarily impacted because of the write-offs. Yes. Okay. And sir, second question is on the restructured book. Like uh, a part of the restructured book would be out of moratorium starting first April. So how uh, have the collection trends been in that book? If you can qualitatively give some, you know, color on that. So we see we don't want to give a, a forward-looking number, but uh, you know we've given the collection status on our uh, restructured book as on 31st March. Right? So it can't be very different there. Okay, but but uh, as at 31st right? March, it, it was be... still not out of moratorium, right? So right. so that's what I'm saying. It can only improve. It can't deteriorate. Okay. And sir, my last question is on the steady state credit cost. I think a little while back in the call, you said that you expect two, two and a half percent kind of steady state credit cost going forward. So was that on the total book or only for microfinance? So that's on the total book. Okay. Okay. Fine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Kartik Chalapa from Vino Vista Fund Management. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thank you for the opportunity again, uh, sir. I just have two questions. The first one is uh, for uh, the housing book. Uh, can you share what is the average uh, ticket size? Eight lakhs fifteen thousand on outstanding. On outstanding. Oh no no on disbursement on disbursement. Uh, Suresh, do you have that number, Suresh? Uh, yeah, it is of course. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, good afternoon. The uh, incremental disbursement mm -hmm. is in the right for thirteen and a half lakh is the average ticket size. Thirteen and a half. Okay, for the year. Yeah. And okay, and uh, for the individual micro loans, what is the average ticket size and yield? Uh, what is the ticket size? One lakh fifteen thousand in a uh, disbursement basis. And uh, are you like to say that the yield is the same as group loan, 19.5? Okay, so if the NPA on the individual book is only 1 to 1.5%, 1 and if I assume credit losses also in a similar range, with a higher ticket size, uh, from a pure micro book perspective, this should be ROA accretive, right? As the mix shifts towards individual loans. Yes. But in fact, size will be ROA accretive, right? Uh, no, 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 no. See, we, we don't expect uh, micro group loans to have a similar credit cost like what we had last financial year, right? So we expect credit cost there also to improve. Uh, so, but clearly it's no, a more you know, Even if you assume the credit cost to be about 225, 250 basis points for the group loans, and this is only 100 basis points lower, with a lower cost income ratio and a higher ticket size, the ROA should actually be materially higher, right? Yes, it will be higher. I don't want to put a con uh, you know, adjective to it, but yes, it is higher. <laughs> okay. okay, okay, this is enough. Thank you very much, Vinil. Wish you all the very best. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, due to time constraints, that was the last question for today. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Sunil Samdani, CFO, for closing comments. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for your time and patience. Thank you very much. Thank you. On behalf of Bandhan Bank Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. <laughs>